it's Ina the Mud Reader and this video is 20 book reviews in 20 minutes which is also my wrap up for May 2021. So I wasn't able to do the wrap up. It's long overdue and it was the month where I've read the most books. So what I am going to do for this video is to talk about each book for a minute which is a challenge because you know how much I talk and also a challenge because I've read this books um, quite a few months ago so I'm not sure if I remember all the details about them but I'll just talk about them for a minute. I have a stopwatch in front of me and I also have my reading tracker here and so yeah let's go ahead and start with the video. So the first book I read for April is Kate and Waiting by Becky Albertalli. So I've always loved Becky Albertalli because of the Simon verse. And I know it's not an Asian authored book, but I it was for a blog tour that I committed myself to doing. So I still have to read it for me. And this book is a story about friendship and about love because we have here an LGBT-ish romance because two best friends um, are crushing on the same guy and it's something it also revolves around theater and it's somewhat of a coming-of-age story and what I loved about the book is it still delivered the Becky Albertalli style of friend of writing that's very light and fluffy but at the same time hits you hard when it matters so yeah definitely loved it the second book i was able to read was the only child by me aso so this one is a thriller so this one is an arc i received way way back from edelweiss and it's a translated work so the, the reason why i picked this up was because i was very very excited to um see how um translations would might affect how much i would love a story and i wanted to see how you know um thrillers work in korean lit and this one i really really loved basically the story revolved around a criminal psychologist and a serial murderer um that's very high what's it called? high profile in korea but at the same time there's also a uh, mystery happening in her daily life with her hus her the one he is dating and his um ex-wife or something like that <laughs> so a uh, third book that i was able to read was shine by jessica jong so this one is a book that is heavily korean the story revolved around a uh, k-pop trainee and the great thing about this book is that the author actually went through it she is one of the most popular korean artists k-pop artists she was part of girls generation so somewhat i'm sure that even though it wasn't like specifically discussed that some of the experiences that the character went through here are her own personal experiences and i think that's um, that's what makes this book special and I'm surprised that this is actually turning into a series and I'd love to go um, and learn more about the characters. I am always passionate about books revolving on music and fame and this one definitely hit the right places so recommend. The next book is Sun Kissed by Casey West. So this is a book I had to read for a blog tour and this one is a perfect summer read something you would want to carry with you to the beach because sun kissed revolved around a family going to this camp or an elevated version of a camp uh, for richer people where um, she would be going on summer vacation after she finds out that her ex cheated on her so she's nursing a broken heart and she'll meet a new guy of course a summer-ish romance and there's also um themes discussed about family friendship and going her own way finding out what she wants to do with her life and you know enjoying some adventures along the way it's a perfect summer read or beach read if you just want something light and fluffy 
So the next read is The Ones We Are Meant to Find by Joan He. It's a book that I was <laughs> that I was very, very excited to read. It's one of my most anticipated reads of 2021. And I was so, so, so excited when I also was given an arc to read it for a blog tour. And this one is a science fiction book. And I've promised myself to read more science fiction this year. And I'm very happy that I was able to do, do so. And one with an amazing author and an amazing writing style. It's leaning more towards climate fiction. But it's a story of two sisters. One sister trying to find the other in a world that's way, way different than what we know. And though I was originally pulled in by this book through its amazing cover, um, reading this story is... A different experience and I really really enjoyed it. So the sixth book I was able to read is Dating Makes Perfect by Pintip Dunn. I finally got a romance themed book and you know me I'm a sucker for romance and this one is something that really excites me because the author is Thai and the main characters are Thai as well. Um, actually Thai American and um, this one is very funny with its premise because it, I've there's a fake dating theme since um, our main character is a younger, youngest sister and her older sisters were having trouble dating when they were in college because they were prohibited to do so when they were in high school. So her parents wanted her to have a practice on dating so they set her up on these fake dates with a guy that she really hated but things change and um yeah <laughs> it's a really really cute and fluffy romance but there are also lines here that hit quite hard and themes that are quite mature so it's still an amazing read now the next three books are actually a part of a trilogy and this is the chronicles of the bitch queen um this set of books the wolf of orin yarrow the ikesar falcon and the dragon of jin Sayang, is something i actually dared myself <laughs> to read during the um asian reading challenge i set for myself which i think didn't bode well because the first book was 496 pages the second book was 640 pages and the fourth book was 448 pages and the this book is epic high fantasy and I'm not the fantasy type of girl, though admittedly, I did enjoy the read, but it, um, I'm usually a very fast reader. But since this book is filled with intricate details, a lot of characters I have to remember, a lot of different places, and the world building I had to remember, it took me quite a bit longer to dive in and learn and get attached to the story. But I, I'm telling you guys, it's worth it. Um, you know, sometimes a, f a dear friend told me that, you know, when you get tired of doing something, like physically exhausted, um, it makes e the experience even more worth it. So I think even though my two brain cells had a stressful time, the epic story of the bitch queen, Queen Talian, was a worthwhile experience. And it's... Um, something that would forever remain special to me because it's one of the first first arcs I ever got. Um, one of the the first forays into book blogging um, and diving on in the community I ever did before. So rereading The Wolf of Orion Yaro was a really fun experience. And um, the hard-hitting conclusion for with this series with um the dragon of jin Sayang is really the perfect way to end the ad adventure and the trilogy so i'm really really recommending this one especially now i'm filming this in august in the middle of the weekathon if you're looking for filipino reads to explore then this is the perfect trilogy to pick up um, the other book i was able to read for me is if You Could Be Mine by Sarah Farizan. Admittedly, this is one of the books 
in May that I didn't particularly enjoy. So this one promises to be an LGBT-themed book. It's a young adult, hard-hitting contemporary. But unfortunately, I, I do appreciate the messages it's trying to portray. It's um, talking about um, the prohibition of um, homosexual relationships in the country of Iran and how harsh the punishments are, some leading to death, but there's something, um, I think the messages weren't delivered in a better way and there's also some themes on uh, that on being transgender that I think borders on transphobia even though the character is a part of the community. So yeah, that's a little weird for me so I wasn't able to give it as high of a rating as I wanted to. The next book is a nonfiction. It's The Groom Will Keep His Name by Matt Ortile. So Matt Ortile is a Filipino who migrated to the U.S. And The Groom Will Keep His Name is his collection of essays talking about his life in the U.S., how he managed all of this as actually a gay man in the U.S. trying to, you know, find his place. And I, I am familiar with him because he is a BuzzFeed staff. And I remember his name on bylines because I do um, usually, you know, fall under the rabbit hole of BuzzFeed videos and BuzzFeed posts. So, yeah, it's... Um, I, I listened to this on audiobook, which the author narrated. So, it was a more personal experience. And I felt like I got a new friend who shared his deepest secrets with me. So, definitely worth the listen. The next book is another book I had to read for a blog tour. So this one is The Ivies by Alexa Dawn. And this is a young adult thriller and I always love some thrillers. So this one was a really, really fun um, adventure. I posted a separate video of this here on the channel. And this one is about a group of girls in high school who want to um start their ivy league careers so they're planning to like make their records perfect so that they would get in into the ivy school that they want but the leader of the group wants them to like focus on a, an ivy league school at that at a time so that the um there are better chances of them getting into their dream school but then um some of them didn't follow through and murder ensues so there's a whodunit here and an extra layer of mystery and there are so many secrets that were revealed. So very, very interesting. The next book is another K-pop read that I'm so happy I read for the Asian read one of the Asian readathons or our readathon. I don't know which one I read this for, but it's another K-pop book, K-pop Confidential by Stefan Lee. I kind of like this a little bit better than Shine. So it's also turning into a series, which I really, really like. And it also dives in into the darker side of K-pop training. And yeah, it's definitely an adventure. We have a trainee who felt like she doesn't belong and um, someone who is late technically in world of K-pop training trying to get to find a groove with people who've been doing this their entire lives and trying to be discovered, trying to be debuted and become a part of a famous K-pop group. Um, you know, to gain stardom and all that. Very, very, very amazing. And there's also some romance elements in there. So, yeah. <laughs> the next book I was able to read was Hard Sell by Hudson Lin. So, this one is another book for a blog tour. But what I loved about this male male romance is I had some Asian characters on the cover, an Asian MM. Karina Press Romance with Asian Men on the cover. Perfect. And I jumped on with the chance to read this book when they asked me to take part on, on the blog tour because 
I'm so happy about seeing that. And this one is actually an age gap romance slash workplace romance slash brother's best friend. It fits all of those tropes that I really love in romance. So yeah, unfortunately, I was a little disappointed with the execution. There are more businessy discussions and, you know, business jargon. Um, I do work in business, so I had I was able to relate to some of it. But for some who aren't, it might be a little confusing, and it kind of steered away from the romance, which you know people would want to experience more of. Next is from Twinkle with Love by Sandia Menon. So this one is a part of the Dimple verse, and with with from Twinkle with Love, we have Twinkle who wants to be. A film director and she always felt like she wasn't seen enough she wanted to be famous she's crushing on the hottest guy in school but she's part of like the nerd group so in this um, book you you dive into her story of her trying to like gain popularity by doing a film where her batchmates would be the actors and then the brother of the guy she is crushing on who is kind of nerdish like her wants to be the producer who would fund the film so it revolves around all of that um and of course there's some romance here i kind of got irritated with twinkle a little bit here and the epistolary style of writing isn't for everyone but all in all still a good read next is ruse so ruse is the Ruse is the second book of the Want Duology where we continue on with what they went through after um, the ending of Want. So there's the processing of losing some of the characters and then still battling the corporate giants who are trying to ruin Taiwan. But this time they're, they're moving to ruining China as a whole as well. So still a very good um, science fiction packed with adventure and romance and also sharing the spotlight with other characters in the book. Now we go to My Imaginary Ex by Nina V. Esguera. It, this is actually a reread. I read this when I was way, way younger, when I was a teenager. And it was really nice to look back on the book. Um, Nina V. Esguera writes very beautifully. And I love the premise of this book as well. Um, what was meant to be an inside joke. Um having to come through and them getting into like a ta tangled web of lies trying to continue on with this joke so basically it's definitely a must read for everyone next is Gudetama surviving the holidays by Wok Jin Clark I love Gudetama and as proof I have a lot of Gudetama memorabilia here and this one is basically a short comic strip um, talking about um, good detama giving advice so very cute some humor some jokes were worked on me some didn't but it's always really really cute to see good detama so yeah next is the surprising power of a good dumpling by white shim this is one of the books that are very 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 special to me it was a surprise just like the title because i randomly picked it up but it delivered something very very special it was not the fluffy contemporary i was expecting it was actually very real and it told me it taught me a lot of lessons at life um it deals with mental health with children having to take care of parents with family with school with um grief so much so many things and they're all done very beautifully so yeah please read it and next is the duke who didn't by courtney milan this is a historical romance i read for the um for the <laughs> rings and petticoats book club so it was a very light and fluffy read wherein we have asian characters in a regency so we have um a duke and a childhood friend who didn't know that he was a duke i mean everyone in the community in the small village didn't know that he was their duke he owns their land they were working for him but they still accepted him he he enjoyed that anonymity and he came back 
to try and capture the heart of his childhood friend who is very busy in trying to help her father. So yeah, this is a really cute, really fluff fluffy romance. If you're looking for a read without much conflict, just fun and fluff, then definitely a good pick. And lastly, Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Eng. So this one is um, something I read for a book club discussion, but I wasn't able to finish the book on time. But still, it's a really, really good literary fiction. I listened to it on audio and I, it, I find it hard to describe this book because it's kind of in a suburban setting and family drama style where you try to understand what each character is going through and how each of their decisions change the the flow of their lives and what happened to each of them cause that led to a certain death so there very very interesting and i loved the way the story um progressed and delivered the message and the author really did a great job in writing this book so yeah so those are all the books i read for me 21 books and i know i had to breeze through some some of them i don't know if i made sense but at the end of it all i want to say to you guys is to read these books read more asian authors don't just do it during aap aapi month but do it all year round so yeah thank you for watching this video and see you on the next one bye